Yo. Yeah. October 8th, 2021. Habcast 154. Episode 154. Let's do it. Happy Friday, you guys. You made it through another one. Let's have some fun. Of course, I have a few things to share with you. An evening of reflection. (laughs) Let's have at it. So, uh, right off the bat, I want to give a shout out to Dion Warwick. For uh for blocking Hellman's on her Twitter account for saying that uh yeah Hellman's was trying to get people to put mayonnaise in the coffee. <laughs> no man, Hellman, yo, uh 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 mayonnaise on sandwiches is debatable amongst people sometimes. <laughs> so to actually uh try to want. How bad is your product going out when the only thing you, yeah, you're trying to get people to put it in things that historically doesn't belong. Nobody puts mayonnaise in coffee. So shout out to Dion Warwick for letting uh, helmets know they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Yo, I have a few stories that I found interesting that I would like to share with you guys. Yes. Who's batting first? Uh, Lakewood Church will will repay the four point four million PPP loan it received in 2020. Now we know the Lakewood Church is the homeboy Joel Osteen that has like the uh the the the, the football stadium or whatever that he has. That uh yeah, he's been under a lot of scrutiny for picking and choosing who he wants to help in time of need. So when I seen this article, the first thing I wanted to look at is who he first off, I'm fairly certain that he uh, he didn't need that money. And uh, and if he did get the money, then I would like to know what I want from this article is to at least get some inkling of who did he use it to help. If he used it to help anybody late, Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church will repay the four point four million. It received the PPP loans. That's usually how loans work. The Houston Chronicle reported Lakewood Church was one of 60 religious institutions in Texas to receive more than $1 million in loans from the CARES Act. The church faced backlash when it initially received a loan by church state separation groups. Oh, the money came from a a place of ill repute. (laughs) Uh, Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church will repay the $4.4 million it received last year in a PPP loan after receiving millions of dollars from the CARES Act Fund in December. The Houston-based church faced major backlash online, specifically from the church-state separation groups, according to the the separation from church and state goes back to the Constitution, where, um, where just because, yeah, yeah, and I was confused about this like why does our flag salute say one nation under god indivisible and why do we have that in our uh in the flag salute when separation from church and state is in our constitution and it's just a it's yeah i i gave up on it if somebody knows then please let me know but other than that yeah it's just a uh yeah 10 months later the church will repay the total amount of funds received Initially, the church defended the the decision to apply for the loan, making an argument that none of the money was going to was going to go to Osteen or his wife. And, you know, that's messed up (laughs) when the first thing that got to come out of your mouth was like, no, 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 it's not for me. It's not for me. Hey, Joe, like nobody asked if it's for you. I'm just saying it's not for me and my wife. I mean, like, yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm just saying that makes things look a little uh, suspicious. 
Like, if nobody would have gave him backlash, maybe that $4.4 million probably would have stayed in the coffers of the church. Maybe. I'm just saying. Like many organizations temporarily shuttered by the pandemic, this loan provided Lakewood Church short-term financial assistance in 2020, ensuring that its approximately 350 employees and their families would continue to receive a paycheck and full health care benefits. Fair enough. The church said through a spokesperson, Lakewood was not alone in this case, as at least 60 Texas religious institutions were approved for more than $1 million in PP loans, according to the Houston Chronicle. Still, church state separation groups criticized religious groups who received this government payout. They argued that since the loans were forgivable, they were essentially grants from the government, which was, by their measure, subsidizing subsidizing religious practices. This goes against the Constitution, they said. Aha! Aha! Waiter, there's a fly in the soup. Religious, <laughs> religious freedom is a core promise of our Constitution, and that means that no one should be, forced, should be forced to pay for someone else's religious beliefs or practices. Separation of church from state. Wow, see, you learn things. I learned something. Rob Boston, senior advisor for the Washington-based Americans United for separation of church and state said, according to the Houston Chronicle, Joel Osteen took over Lakewood Church in 1999. Following the death of his dad in 1999, his sermons to 52,000 52, weekly congregants are seen worldwide. Wow. And if if this is a week, they all put a buck in the, uh, in the basket. That's $52,000 a week. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, it's a non-biased observation. <laughs> Delete that. What's next? Oh, yeah. Texas woman looked for a hitman to kill a family member and ended up arrested after paying undercover cop. I'm pretty sure there are no hit. I've done this type of story. I've came across this type of article uh, a few times now, and it never ends well. Like, the hit, there's never a hit. <laughs> There's never a hit. There was one where I think the guy, like they say, uh, it's hitmans are hitmen, hitmen are us on the dark, on the dark web. Like it would be that easy to find for somebody that just works at Starbucks or something. Like, yeah, I'm looking for a hitman. I'm looking for a hitman. Check out the episode bonus if done by uh July 31st. Check that out. I mean, and you there's no such thing as hitmen on the internet. You're not gonna find one that easy. Either they're police. Or they just want to hear your story and pretend they get off on it. A Texas woman and business owner was arrested earlier this week after allegedly conspiring to have a family member killed by a hitman. We're going to get a black. Yeah. Cheryl Thibodeau, 42, stands accused of criminal solicitation for capital murder after she provided funds to a police officer for the requested kill, according to law enforcement. In East Texas, it became clear to us that this was going to be a solicitation to commit capital murder. Russ County Sheriff John Wayne Valdez, that is a Texas name. Wow. <laughs> we received information that this individual was attempting to find someone to do harm to a, a family member before she uh, before she could actually find someone who, who could do it. That's when we jumped in there. Uh, she made an agreement to meet. Uh, the name of the family member has not been released. Oh, it's probably a cousin. Nor has their familiar relation to the uh, defendant and authorities are keeping mum. Uh, police claim they somehow obtained the information that the defendant was looking for a professional killer to take out the unidentified family member in question. Please say it was on the internet. The, uh, the sheriff officer used an undercover, the sheriff's office used an undercover officer to make contact with Thibodeau and arranged payment for the would-be hit. How much? Come on. How much was it? Valdez told KTRE journalist Bob Hallmark those efforts would span at least the rest of the day, that deputies were attempting to gather more evidence and gather evidentiary search uh, warrants as well. The odd nature of the case means authorities have a long way to go. <laughs> Her bond was set at a hundred thousand dollars. Damn, she faced ninety nine years in state prison. She didn't actually get him killed. That's. <laughs> I mean, you get something for effort, but damn, you didn't actually do it. Ninety nine years. 
And it wasn't like you were talking to a real hit man. It never was going to happen. Jeez. Shit, 99 years. I guess they want to make sure she doesn't try it again. But while she's in jail, she doesn't figure out how to get the right, who to go to. You finally found, yeah, you're going to lock her up for 99 years where she has 99 years to find out who can really do it for her and get it done. <laughs> find out how to really get it done. Arizona man, 18, allegedly killed his ex-girlfriend's current boyfriend, then dumped body in the desert. Why do you men? And you women, after your man or your woman or your lover leaves you, she left you. He left you because it's you. It wasn't it, it wasn't somebody else got in the way of the relationship. It was you. So if you think you kill him or her, do you think that <laughs> that's going to drive him or her back into your uh, loving arms? If that's what you want to call it, I call it uh, selfish arms because you don't really care you just don't want to be the one that lost yeah that's what yeah you can say you can tell me you can tell old avery but it's me baby it's avery you can tell me it's fentanyl free fridays come clean yeah arizona man 18 allegedly killed his ex-girlfriend's current boyfriend and dumped body in the desert like this like she only had two choices you or him and you got rid of that and you eliminated yeah like she like you become the boyfriend again by default. <laughs> An 18-year-old Arizona man was allegedly uh yeah, later disposing of the body and uh, yeah, he looks like it. You know what you do before you decide to uh you know what you do be before you decide to kill uh the new guy or the bounce back girl or whatever the rebound. You know what? You just go home. You go home, you take a nap, you know, you take it, you just rub one out. I mean, and see if that's how you really feel about her. If that's how you really feel about him. If you, because what are you so angry about? That's a lot of pent up frustration. You just let it, just let it right on out. Wash your hands and, <laughs> and then make a hard decision of what to do with the rest of your life before you throw it away. Jer Jerison Perez has been charged with first degree premeditated murder, first degree murder during a crime kidnapping, tampering with physical evidence, and concealing dead body parts, according to inmate records. He was arrested on Wednesday and is being held on a million-dollar bond. Damn. According to KTAR, Phoenix police say Perez allegedly kidnapped 19-year-old Oscar Ortega at gunpoint and forced him into his vehicle, where Perez allegedly shot and killed Ortega. Why are you, you, why are you so mad, man? Like, yeah, a spokesperson. For the Phoenix. Now, neither one of you are going to get the girl. And I'm pretty sure the next guy <laughs> is just going to fucking, is just, just going to be crucifying her in bed. And she's going to forget all about you. According to the uh, court documents obtained by KTBK, or take a manage to send a text to his girlfriend about the kidnapping and then told, you did it and then told. You should have at least, see, I'm no good. Don't listen to me. You'll be in jail for the rest of your life. You, you, yeah, you, you wait and you don't know, well, where's your man? Everything's going good. I hope your relationship is, you know, like, yeah, I, I missed you. I was happy. Yeah. I, I was upset. You know, I didn't like the way we ended things. And I just wanted to apologize, say, I'm sorry. Or I hope we good. We stay cool, whatever. I won't contact you anymore. Like, yeah, you. And then she go, Ortega, he's gone. <laughs> I think he ran off on me. We were supposed to go to dinner and he stood me up. Saying, I told you I'm the one for you. Yeah, that's how you feel. I told you, like, yeah, hey, I didn't want to see that happen to you. That's why I didn't want to see you go. I'll never do that to you. That's how you get your way in there. I mean, <laughs> please don't kill anybody in the desert to try to get some snatch back on the team. I mean, <laughs> Case KSAZ reported that Perez's family informed police that he allegedly confessed to killing Ortega and handed over a gun. Authorities claim that the suspect then confessed and led police to the location where he left the body. Oh, yeah. And then and then when, after you kill him, you come back down to earth and you'd be like, well, she wasn't really like, eh, she really didn't do that much for me. You realize that you was mad because if anybody was supposed to get left, you were supposed to be the one that left, that left her. That's what people really... I really think that's what people be angry about. The fact that, yeah, I didn't really want him. 
I didn't really want. So who who is who is he? Who is she to leave me? I mean, I'm the one that does the lead. These boots are made for what? Next up. Delete that. Yeah, please don't kill nobody over these. And then these this is happening young. This is the uh this is what's happening with young people that you don't even know if this is like the woman or the man that you're gonna be with for the rest of your life. I uh, mean, for you to be setting up hits, you on the dark web trying to get people killed. Um, <laughs> and you don't even know. Like they say most marriages when people get uh married that early at 18, like 50% of them end in divorce. Like, that's what you're setting yourself up for. That's what you're killing somebody over for. Nail salon employee bitten, hit with stun gun, and punched in face after argument about service. Yo, I'm telling you, these girls don't play. They don't play about their hair. They really don't play about their hair. But one thing, they do not play about their nails. And there's just YouTube videos of nail salon employees fucking up customers and customers fucking up nail salon employees. It's like you don't know what you're going to. It's like mating with a black widow. You don't know if she's going to kill you afterward. Or <laughs> Police say a group of women attacked an employee at a nail salon in the Bronx. That sounds like some Bronx shit. It, it, it happened shortly before 544. Shout out to the Bronx. 544 p.m. on Saturday, on September 2nd at Estefy Nail Salon on Westchester Avenue. Police said the suspects began arguing with a 32-year-old employee about her service, then allegedly grabbed a, a gel nail lamp. What the hell is that? <laughs> and started to leave the station. When the employee tried to stop them, police said one suspect bit her right hand savages, stunned her right arm with a stun gun, and punched her multiple times in the face. This would have took down... This is... This <laughs> Yo, this was done like they practiced how to uh, get rid of would-be attackers. This is exactly what they <laughs> they beat her. They beat this girl up like they beat this 32-year-old employee up like she was like she was a would-be attacker coming across her in a dark parking lot or something. Like they they systematically died. <laughs> the victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. That's the only reason I could laugh about it is because uh. I could laugh. First off, it's fucking hilarious that people that. Oh, police arrest man for trying to rob the same bank for second day in a row. <laughs> he tried it. Yo, anytime an article says that <laughs> for trying to rob anything that says you attempted a robbery or you tried to rob. That is a horrible term. That that whole term right there, you need to just throw it away because anytime you try to commit a crime, you're not, yeah, you did something wrong. Trying, commit it or execute it or properly or rob the. That's what we want to hear. Well, that's, please don't do it. But uh, yeah, you feel where I'm coming from. Money can't buy smarts. Who wrote this shit? <laughs> A California man who allegedly robbed the Southern California Chase Bank was apprehended by police after he was caught attempting to rob the same. That's what he did. On Monday afternoon, the man entered the Fountain Valley Chase Bank and handed the teller a note demanding money. <laughs> what is this? Dude? Have we not gotten? I think this is the only crime where they haven't got sophisticated is this brick and mortar bank robberies. You got people that's out here uh, filing 745 tax returns, booking COVID hotels and just cash at me the money, everything. Yeah. And that they're, they're getting innovative with it. And we still got these people with the bandana over the motherfucking mouth and the fucking two fingers in the hoodie. Take, give me the money. Passing the note around, uh, pull a barely legible note <laughs> before officers can re on a, on a, on a McDonald's napkin before officers can respond to the robbery. The crook got away with the large amount of cash. Oh, so he got the first one. All right. On Tuesday afternoon, police received yet another call about a robbery taking place at the same location. Officers that descended on the scene managed to catch up with the with and arrest a 33-year-old suspect. The unidentified suspect has had numerous robbery convictions in the past, which means after you got that first one, you were supposed to retire, son. Yeah, if you... <laughs> Anytime, if you have numerous robbery convictions, you're not very good. Your winning percentage 
is pretty goddamn low. So you are supposed to take that that one that you got the first time, taking a slide with it. Whatever you got, stretch it out. Make a stretch. Eat ramens. <laughs> Eat ramens. Don't go for the steak for a couple months. Let that money, yeah. Yeah, damn. And you go, and this is what happens. What This is the formula. When people get greedy, they get sloppy, and they get caught. Next up. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe and comment. Let me know you rocking with your boy. America's unemployed are sending a message. They'll go back to work when they feel safe and well compensated, a.k.a. or B.K.A., better known as <laughs> we'll go to work when we're good and goddamn ready. We'll come back. No. Do you know that? Uh, what missed what missed the show yesterday was that a Wendy's employee dumped hot grease on a customer because the customer complained about the food being cold. Are you ready to go to work under those conditions where it's just a powder keg of you don't know if it's going to be one of your own teammates or if it's going to be a customer that pulls a gun on you because there was too much sugar in the coffee or because the uh, something is down or the anemic September employment report with only 194,000 jobs added, it illustrates the extent to which the recovery stall as coronaviruses surge la- as coronavirus cases surge last month. But it also signals something deeper: America's unemployed are still struggling with childcare and health it through issues, and they are reluctant to return to jobs they see as unsafe or undercompensated. Undercompensated and unsafe is a yeah. That's putting it mildly. You being very conservative with that and what I've been driving home for the past while now is that people actually have time off to do the research on the jobs that they really want on the things that they really want to do and they took that that money and they did research took some classes and now they're they're pursuing it they're pursuing what they actually want to do so for you you jobs out there that wasn't paying anybody shit anyway I mean, for y'all to start crying now that, oh, nobody wants to come work for you. Nobody really wanted to work for you back then. It's just that (laughs) it's just that people got bills to pay. (laughs) Like, yeah, everybody can't work at the bouncy house factor. (laughs) Uh, uh, For months, economists predicted a surge in hiring in September as unemployment benefits. Yeah, you missed the mark on that economist. And for that, I love it. (laughs) The fact that, hey, what if people just don't, what if people finally find the one thing that they like to do and they find a way to get from under the, to get out of the, uh, get off the hamster wheel and uh, pursue it? Nobody never accounted for that. They thought that they will always have a, and yeah, uh, economists predicted a surge in hiring in September as unemployment benefits expired for millions of workers and schools reopened across the county, country. Uh, instead, last month marked the weakest hiring this year, and an alarming number of women had to stop working again to deal with unstable schooling and child care situations. The numbers are striking. 309,000 women over age 20 dropped out of the labor force in September, meaning they quit work or halted their job search. In contrast, 182,000 men joined the labor force. Labor Department data showed the simplest explanation for the mediocre jobs jobs gains in September is the rapidly spreading delta variant of the coronavirus it's it's a simple explanation yes it is indeed but think about how many people started their own businesses or how many people just pressed up their own t-shirts doing designs doing their own hair doing hair doing all types of stuff yeah that music career popped off you got a you got an extra few collabos in the, uh, the past few months with with some people that you yeah you got a chance to like do some shows you out there yeah people had a chance to finally figure like damn like you wake up one morning and wow i don't have to work today well what do i do now yeah you start like yeah like so shit always wanted to know how to like make pottery maybe i could learn how to make and you start looking shit up you'd be like oh well i could do this i'll take a class and next thing you know you're selling like bowl you're selling coffee mugs and shit with your name yeah I mean, like a mere 2,100 jobs were added in hotels 
and just 29,000 in restaurants, especially the restaurants. Oh, that article where they were paying people as long as it uh, added up to like, what, seven bucks an hour, like $3 an hour. And then they were squ- scamming off of people's tips. Like, hey, come on, you make people not want to work. Uh, the COVID surge also torpedoed the reopening of schools, uh, public schools, and a return to in-person learning. Schools repeatedly face outbreaks in staff, including many bus drivers who were hesitant to return to driving buses. <laughs> the kids up in Boston had uh, people driving them to school. It was a it was a stripper bus, had the stripper pole and everything. <laughs> hey, kids got to go to school, man. You know, as those under 12 couldn't be vaccinated. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, the coronavirus continues to be a major. Uh, for those looking for silver linings in a report, the most obvious is the U.S. unemployment rate fell to 4.8 in September, the lowest since the pandemic hit. and marks a stunning rebound in just a year and a half from April 2020. Oh, yeah, the silver lining. <laughs> wow. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. I love doing this. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't forget to hit your notifications so you don't miss me bringing this content to you. I love you guys. I'll talk to you very, very, very soon. Adios.